Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us. We are broadcasting live from Children's Hospital and Medical Center, and we have some very important and exciting news to share with you today. Children's is expanding its pediatric intensive care unit. Um, this Wednesday, in fact, we will be opening a second pediatric ICU unit that we will be calling Pediatric ICU South um, to increase capacity so we can care for the region's sickest, most critically ill pediatric patients. Uh, Dr. Andrew McFadden joins us uh, for this tour today. Um, he is the medical director of our pediatric ICU. Um, and uh, just to kind of explain why we're growing and why we are increasing beds um, to care for kids. Yes, well, so for the last several years now, Children's Hospital has grown quite a bit uh, as far as the number of patients that we serve, um, also new services that we have here um, that are drawing more and more patients to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And with that increased number of children, a certain number of them are going to become critically ill. Mm -hmm. So in the ICU, we have seen over the last four years or so, we've seen about a 10 to 15% growth every year. Um, and we've outgrown our old ICU. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, let's take a, take a walk back here. Um, so this morning, employees had a chance to check out this space for the first time before we're inviting you guys in. And we do want to invite your questions. If you have questions for Dr. McFadden, uh, please put those in the space below um, as we broadcast. So how many rooms, kind of as we walk back to one, um, how many rooms are back here? And yeah. what makes a pediatric ICU unique? So our current ICU has 19 beds. This space gives us another nine beds. So now we're up to 28 beds. And uh, my prediction is that uh, we'll probably have those filled this winter. Um, but, uh, but the extra nine beds will help uh, us to keep from transferring patients to other hospitals. So uh, last year we transferred over 100 kids or turned away over 100 kids and had them go to other children's hospitals or Nebraska Medicine. Mm -hmm. um, this year, uh, so far, we've had about 50 kids that we were not able to care for here because we didn't have space for them. And so uh, most of those went to Nebraska Medicine, mm -hmm. but a few went to uh, Colorado, uh, Kansas City, Des Moines, Sioux Falls, uh, Minneapolis. So mm -hmm. we've, we've uh, unfortunately, you know, that's, uh, some of those hospitals are quite a hike away, yeah. and that's a, a big uh, stress and, and hardship for the family. And at the same time, the Hubbard Center that we're building just along West Dodge Road doesn't open until 2021. So explain how this kind of is a kind of a creative solution until we have that added capacity. Right. So this used to be um, our old short stay unit, mm -hmm. and uh, and so these would this. Uh, unit was for kids who were going to be here maybe one night, two nights, um, just a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. um, when we originally built this, um, we actually uh, had it set up where we could turn it into an ICU. So many years ago when we built this unit, um, we sort of saw the, you know, just right. in case, yeah. saw the need. And, and so it's got the, the medical gases and the, the amount of electricity that we need um, to run an ICU in here. Um, we're actually building a new short stay unit in a different part of the hospital that actually was uh, some offices. Um, mm -hmm. So we're, we're uh, so our short stay unit is not going away; it's just moving and expanding as well. Got it. But this will um, th these extra nine beds will be able to um, have a lot of kids uh, mm -hmm. come through here if mm -hmm. needed. Talk about some of the things that make a pediatric ICU unique. I know some of this equipment is part of that. So there's three things that you need for a, a pediatric ICU. You need equipment, um, you need uh, the ability to monitor ex uh, extra sick kids, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you need the people. And the people are probably the most important because uh, it takes a lot of training um, to uh, uh, get them to know and do what mm -hmm. they need to know and do. And that, sure. and that takes uh, quite a bit of time and effort. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, the equipment, um, we basically can monitor just about everything that you can think of. So, What's this one up here? Yeah, on so this is a monitor. So all of our kids are actually hooked up to a heart, uh, a heart monitor, and, uh, and that shows up in the room, but it also shows up at these central monitors. So 
um, some one of the other nurses uh, or the doctors walking by, they can look and see how a kid is doing at a glance mm -hmm. um, without having to go into a room. If somebody's stepped away and they're, they're down the hall a little bit, these will alarm all over the unit and uh, so we can respond quickly as, as we need to. Um, these actually will, so, we, so with the opening of this, we actually have two units now and, and, and the patients over here actually will show up in the other unit as well okay. in case we need uh, to bring additional resources from there over to here. Sure, so just to explain, the current pediatric intensive care unit is still where it's always been. Still where it's always been. In the main hospital. Still taking care of lots and lots of kids. Absolutely. And, uh, and so this is uh, to help take care of those the, the, um, mm -hmm. extra kids. Sure. What about these these stations here? What, yeah. what is their purpose? So with kids who are critically ill, um, they often need uh, emergency procedures. Um, this is actually our crash cart. So. If somebody were to um, have a, an instance where they quit breathing or their heart stopped, then the, this is, has all the equipment we need to try to get it restarted. Mm -hmm. um, this is our uh, brand new um, uh, scope uh, to help us if we have to put a breathing tube in. Um, it's a video scope so we can actually uh, okay. see a little bit easier so what right we're there. doing. Um, it magnifies it um, and, uh, and then uh, the other people who are at the bedside can also see what's going on, which is uh, very important because uh, mm -hmm. this is a team. So, so the thing about the ICU is, is not one person or even two people. This is over here. It's very much a team effort. Mm -hmm. Well, take us back into one of the yeah. rooms, and they're they're a little bit larger than your typical med surge room. Why is that? So the uh, so with a critically ill child mm -hmm. uh, comes a lot of equipment. Right. And we got to have a place to put all that equipment. Also, some of these kids do need um, to have uh, procedures performed, and so we need to have space to do that. So if we put in a central line, a central venous line, or an arterial line, or if we have to intubate or do dialysis, um, then we have room to move around and, and uh, uh, take care of that. Um, over here, you'll see some of the equipment that we use. So this is a ventilator. So these are for kids who can't do the breathing on their own, and we have to do the breathing for them. So we have uh, uh, so we have this machine that that uh, can do that for us. These are actually brand spanking new. Okay. So this one's never been used on anybody. Top of the um, line. Top of brand the line. New. Really excited to have this. Good. Um, it's uh, it's the next generation up from the current our current ventilators. Okay. So. We're really pleased with our older ventilators, um, and these are gonna be even better. Mm -hmm. And we did have a question, and, and you okay. mentioned this. So this space used to be a short stay unit. Correct. Um, and just talk about, again, the shift of, okay, that still exists, but it'll exist in a different spot. Well, yeah, so this summer, um, the short stay unit is gonna open up in the pavilion, for mm -hmm. those of you who are um, uh, familiar yeah. with Children's Hospital. So it's gonna be on the first floor, kind of behind the gift shop, I think. Mm -hmm. um, uh, not quite sure what was back there. Yeah, <laughs> there, I, think I think it was sleep, human resources Human actually, resources and the two. sleep labs were back there. Um, so all that's moved out and that's gonna be 13 beds. So this is a nine bed unit. They're gonna go to 13 beds. Um, so yeah. it'll be a, a net gain of four beds. Um, so that so that's what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening with them. So they sure. won't be opening until this summer. Okay, now what about this monitor, is that the heart monitor? Yeah, so we actually, so there's two. There's a big one that stays at the bedside all the time, and there's a little one that follows the patient around. So if the patient needs to go off the floor to say the operating room or to radiology, um, that uh, monitor goes with them. And the information that we get um, from that monitor goes to a central server. So no matter where they are, where the kids are, are in the hospital, uh, we collect that data from them and so we can go back and review it if we need to. There's one screen we haven't talked about on this side and it's blank, but what is that piece of equipment? Yeah, so this uh, this little uh, uh, sort of weird piece of little computer looking yeah. piece of equipment, um, that is what we call the NEARS monitor and basically what that does is that helps us to monitor how much oxygen uh, is in the uh, brain and uh, we also monitor the kidney. And we use that to um, give us an idea of how well uh, blood is pumping to those uh, organs. 
Um, and that monitor actually can ch uh, change quickly. So um, it gives us a little bit of a heads up um, uh, before we might see things on labs or even on the big monitors overhead because that one's very sensitive. So we, uh, we pay a lot of attention to that monitor. Now one thing that might not seem, I don't know, might seem like a smaller thing, but not for the patient experience are these bathrooms. Yeah. We've got to talk yeah. about the bathrooms. Yes, uh, and I don't know how many of, how many of our viewers have been in the, in the PICU already. But uh, you'll notice um, they actually have bathrooms yeah. over here, and pretty nice bathrooms. Yeah. And yes, the door closes. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up on the screen, which is funny. They're like, yes, because yeah. in our current, so in the yeah. pediatric ICU North, we don't have bathrooms in the rooms, correct? No. Well, they all, they're the toilet under okay. the sink. Okay, okay. But it's not I, like this ensuite type of bathroom. I don't know that any parent's ever been brave enough to use that, mm -hmm. but, uh, but the... Uh, but yeah, so this unit does have bathrooms and then uh, our, in the new tower, um, mm -hmm. all of the ICU beds are gonna have bathrooms in the room. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what this whole process points to is the need for growth and we're building this exciting new Hubbard Center for Children. Um, so we did have a question about, and I'm gonna have to get on the other side of the screen so I get it right. Um, how will transferring back to the hospital go in serious situations? That's yeah. the question. So we have, um, uh, well, first of all, um, we can do, we're going to do everything over here except ECMO. Okay. So um, our kids who need life heart, support, uh, heart Current, lung bypass, okay. yeah, heart lung bypass, um, they're actually um, going to go back over to Pick You North, and uh, that's where we'll do, um, we'll, we'll do ECMO over there. Mm -hmm. um, if the kid is too unstable to go over there, for mm -hmm. us to transport over there, mm -hmm. the ECMO team can come over here, put them on ECMO, and then we'll, we'll uh, take them over there. Um, uh, otherwise, the, um, everything else we do over there, we can do here. We have mm -hmm. uh, pediatric intensivists over here and the, that are assigned to this unit, and then uh, PICU nurses. Um, respiratory therapist so mm -hmm. um, we uh, don't anticipate we're gonna be the once a kids over here right. um, really the only place they should go after here is to a regular room on the floor one question that I heard this morning was what kind of patients do you care for in a pediatric intensive care unit so could you just speak in general of um, how sick these kids really are so these kids are the sickest of the sick mm -hmm. so um, uh, they can be newborns, uh, depending on you know, if they have heart disease, we'll care for them. Um, they, uh, most of the time though, they're old, you know, a little bit older kids, so most of the newborns will go to the uh, newborn intensive care unit. Um, but everybody else after that, uh, they come to us, and we have, so we have kids that are newborn, and we also have kids in their 20s as well, mm -hmm. uh, adults in their mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 20s. And, and typically the ones in their 20s are, are uh, people that have, been with us their entire lives mm -hmm. and uh, and they continue to, to come back to Children's Hospital because of their uh, their unique needs. Um, we have kids with diabetes, we have kids with pneumonia, asthma, we have a lot of kids with viral illnesses mm -hmm. that can't breathe and, and we have to do the breathing for them. Mm -hmm. um, we have kids with head injuries, we have um, a lot of kids uh, after surgery um, will monitor them here. So all of our kids who have open heart surgery, um, they'll come to the uh, PICU uh, for care afterwards. Um, mm -hmm. We do a lot of neurosurgery uh, procedures as well, so brain tumor removals, um, do uh, uh, cranial reconstructions uh, mm -hmm. for for kids whose uh, bones fuse, their, their skull bones fuse too quickly. Mm -hmm. um, we do. Uh, we have kids who've just had spinal fusion surgery, so you know we've uh, they've fixed the the curve in their back mm -hmm. for for scoliosis. Um, so basically, um, we will take care of any kid mm -hmm. anywhere, anytime, mm -hmm. and that's what we love to do. So it really pains us when we don't get to be the ones to do sure. it, and we have to send them off to one of our one. Now, I wouldn't say competitor. One of our colleague yeah, hospitals yeah. that do, they In do the a region. great they do a great job. Sure, and you know we're we're really really glad we're, that they're there for us. Mm -hmm. But we want to be the ones taking care sure. of these kids. And how hard is that? I mean, so. you kind of just uh, segued into this, but how hard is it when it's a patient and a family that maybe you've 
cared for before and they want to be here how hard has it been first and foremost on, on the family when you say oh, we're, we're full but then also on your team because like you said you want to be the person to, to deliver that very best care so just speak about that um, yeah well it's really really hard for the kids that have been with us for a long time that have been in and out of the hospital and and we've gotten to know them over the years and then to say I'm sorry we don't have room for you we're gonna have to send you to a different hospital it's really really tough mm -hmm. and uh, um, and the the families are they're they're good sports about it and yeah. you know they they want what's best for their kid and they they understand but uh, but uh, it's you know going to Minneapolis is a long drive um, yeah. and especially if you're not from Omaha say you're from Lincoln or Grand Island now all of a sudden you're adding an extra six hours onto your drive that's that is a tough uh, you know tough position to be in mm -hmm. the other thing is these are these are our neighbors I mean these are our friends these are our families and um, you know there's a lot of times we're caring for people the nurses went to high school with, with mm -hmm. mom or dad or mm -hmm. or you know it's somebody's cousin and so you know we we take this very personally when we can't we can't care for them as we've been looking around these rooms I mean it's clean um, very calm right now but ultimately this is going to be a very intense environment so I just am curious for you personally why did you go into this type of medicine critical care for children, um, how'd you go into that? Well, it, uh, so uh, I spent a lot of time in the in the neonatal ICU as a uh -huh. resident, and uh, and I liked the type of patients that were in there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, then when I went and spent some time in the pediatric ICU and just seeing all the the different uh, problems that they had, and the kids were a little bit older, mm -hmm. you could. You know, Correct. some of them could actually talk to you and mm -hmm. stuff, which mm -hmm. was kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, Relationships it, it, with families. And yeah, things. yeah, and you just get hooked. Um, the uh, I got uh, I really love the the medical problems that and the and seeing the physiology in action. So you know, in in I don't have to wait for a result, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know, things are happening right now. I can see um, the result when we when we intervene. Um, but that so that's kind of what got me hooked in or, or started in in the ICU but but what keeps me here is the families and just watching the families watch what they go through and just seeing how they step up and the strength and the courage that they have is really really inspiring to me and actually uh, I get a lot of um, get a lot of motivation out of that just seeing how um, other people uh, go through this and handle it. It's um, uh, I'm often asked, you know, what what do I do to take care of myself? Mm -hmm. Actually, probably. Well, there's two things. One, um, this is team effort. Yeah. So I have. You're not alone. Not You've got alone. a team of experts. I've got a lot of people that I can talk to that understand what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. But um, probably the bigger thing, though, is getting to know the families. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just. Um, you know, a, a, a really, really hard time for them, but just seeing how they handle things is is actually relaxing to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So inspiring. I know it's a little weird, but no, uh, but no. it's just you know just seeing you somebody else go through that. this and handle it. You know, suddenly it doesn't make my problems sure, seem so big. Sure, sure. So. It's just perspective and the resilience you see. So, yeah. and just looking at this space and, and part of why it's so important. We'll walk back here. Um, <laughs> Why it's so important we have these nice rooms for these patients is because often in this setting they're here for a long time is that is that true kind of describe the if there is a typical stay yeah so there well we have we have uh, basically two sets of patients we have patients that are only going to be here mm -hmm. two three maybe four days mm -hmm. and and uh I think our average is actually about four days mm -hmm. um so that's a, not a, mm -hmm. a not too insignificant long. amount mm -hmm. of time but it's not you know, too long. I think most people can mm -hmm, handle four mm -hmm, days, mm -hmm. but we do have other kids that um, are here for months at a time. Mm -hmm. So it's not unusual to have a few, to have three or four kids in the ICU that um, are here for four, five, six, eight months. Yeah. Um, I think our record was three years. Right. Um, wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. So the, we had one little boy went home after his third birthday, wow. and uh, had been. In, I, and I see you his entire life. So they know they get to know these rooms, our yes. team, the entire mm -hmm. hospital so well.
Um, why are you excited about, um, oh, Mitch is pointing <laughs> to the bed. This is a good point too. These are pretty nice beds because again, we're talking about people staying here for a long time. Yeah. And often, even though they could go to the Rainbow House, they want to be near, so right, these right. are kind of nice sleeper sofas too, right? Yeah, so, and, and people do sleep on them, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and some people are better or better at it than others. Yeah, some people don't like them, <laughs> some, some people, people are okay. Some people, all the alarms and stuff oh, keep yeah. them up. And, and so the, the kids that are going to be really busy, um, the, lots of alarms, mm -hmm. and we can, we're going to have the lights on all night, and the yeah. nurses are... Uh, just very busy doing this, doing that. Mm -hmm. We we try to encourage those families as much as they can, if they could, you know. Uh, we we do have um, some parent sleep room, couple parent sleep rooms mm -hmm. here, um, but then if they could, you know, go home or go to the Rainbow House, right. so they can get a little bit of a break. Really, really hard to get the parents to do that, mm -hmm. and we understand that. Sure. But um, but you know, we tell them it's okay if they if they do, and we'll yeah. we'll call them and and something happens. Yeah, we've gotten some comments. Um, one mom said that she spent over 400 days here, and then yeah. we saw another <laughs> over uh, four months. So yeah. Yeah. if you could just speak to those relationships that you have, that you develop in a pediatric intensive care unit setting, and yeah. how much those mean to you. Um, well, it is uh, um, a little bit of it's, well, it's fun. Yeah. So it, it's, um, you know, you, you're you thrown together into right. a situation that nobody wanted. Right. Um, and just, it's sort of fun to see how people um, make the best of it and sort of adjust, mm -hmm. you know, behaviors mm -hmm. and expectations and how they interact. Cling together, and, how you and, to come together as a and, team. Yeah, and, and just watching those relationships um, develop over time, um, I think is extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that, um, and, and this is going to sound a little, uh, a little um, patronizing, I guess, but I'm old, um, okay. and but but sort of watching some of these parents Younger grow parents. up over time, oh, yeah. you know, just think 400 days, mm -hmm. are you going to be the same at the beginning of 400 yeah. days? There's a lot the of end? life lived in There's these units. There's a lot of life lived, and mm -hmm. just to see those changes over time, it's, um, it's, uh, pretty cool actually mm -hmm. um, and the same as we've got a lot of young nurses watching them yeah, develop watching them grow up yeah so, it's kind yeah. of a family so it, it is and it's you know some of it is a lot like watching your kids sort yeah. of yeah um, grow up and take responsibility mm -hmm. and handle things mm -hmm. and you're kind of proud of them and, absolutely so. um, how excited, just to bring it back to how we are launching and opening a new uh, second pediatric intensive care unit, how exciting and just really, really needed is this expansion? Is yeah. pediatric yeah. ICU South? Well, we didn't, so we've been growing about 10 to 15% every year. Um, we did not know how we were going to get through the next three years mm -hmm. before we opened everything up. And uh, we were not looking forward to sending a hundred kids every year to somewhere else. Absolutely. So um, we're really, really excited about being able, when we get called, being able to just say yes. Mm. That's the easiest for us and the most rewarding for us. Mm -hmm. And we're, like I said, we like to do this. We're happy right. to, we're happy to step in and, and care for these kids. So mm -hmm. um, being able to you know, talk to the doctor in Grand Island or Kearney or wherever and say, sure, bring them on. Bring them we, here. We, yeah, and that's yeah. what they want to hear. That's what the families want to hear. And like I said, that's what we want to be able to say. So we're pretty excited. And, yeah. and nine beds is going to go a long way towards uh, meeting that need. It, it, we'll, we'll see. If we keep doing 10 to 15% growth, we yeah. may get to three years and we're back yeah. in the same situation, but at least we'll be... Yeah, we're trying we, to adapt yeah. with yeah. with the growth, for sure. And um, we'll wrap up here in just a minute, but I do want to ask you, um, you can brag a little bit on your team. You know, what do you want the community to know about um, pediatric intensive care here at Children's Day? And your yeah. team, you mentioned this is a team effort. Yes, it's a team effort. So uh, this past year we were named a... Um, a beacon gold uh, level unit. Okay. Um, our, Translate that for us. Yeah. What does that so mean? what does that mean? So the um, America uh, wait the Critical Care Nurses yeah. Association uh, awards different levels of uh, I think it's uh, 
bronze, silver, gold, depending on if you meet certain criteria. And we were one of actually only 11 pediatric ICUs in the country to get the gold. Now our NICU also got gold, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool for yeah, them. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, but we were pretty happy when we got that. Absolutely. The other thing is that our ECMO team actually also got a gold level designation by the national organization that uh, accredits ECMO services. So and that's heart lung bypass, essentially that's the life heart, support. That's the heart lung bypass, yes, that okay. is the pin, I mean, beyond ECMO yes. there is nothing else if mm -hmm. you, yeah, mm -hmm. so that's the most that we can do to support somebody. Sure. Well, it's an incredible team, and thank you for giving us a kind of behind the scenes first look of um, the new pediatric intensive care unit south. It's a place that no parent wants to be, no child right. wants to be, but if you need it, you're so glad it's here. So we're glad to be able to serve the community and the region in this way. And uh, thank you for joining us today. And uh, be sure to follow us on Children's Facebook page and Twitter if you are not already following us. And you can always visit us online at childrensomaha.org.